This is life with normal sight, this is life with thermal sight, and this is life in hindsight, because I'm already regretting this video. I've lived my whole life with just my five senses, but I've always wondered if having a superpower would make my life any easier. And since you can't turn off a superpower, I'm gonna be spending the next 50 hours wearing this headset to see if I could survive life in thermal vision. Holy sh! I don't even know how to react to this. It's so overwhelming. As I started adjusting to my new reality, I noticed I was having trouble trusting what my new eyes were telling me. Oh, Woo! Yeah! yeah! I don't know who these people are. I also have to introduce you to my friend Repeated Failure, since he's the one who actually designed the Thermal Vision headset I'm wearing for this. And since the camera on it is literally worth five grand, he's tagging along to make sure I don't break it. The good news is I'm not bumping into anybody which makes me feel really good. Other than the rainbow being seared into my retinas, things were actually going really well. That's you guys look really hot right now, actually. <laughs> Way to go. But as usual, I was on a mission, and I wanted to experience as much different stuff as possible in the next 50 hours. I feel like a detective. As I was trying to board the subway, I started to realize I'd have to entirely relearn how to live a normal life. All right, well, we get on the train, we're gonna need a transit pass, so I gotta, I gotta try to cop one. Yeah, I've run into a problem. Before starting, I knew what I'd be gaining with thermal vision, but I didn't really realize how much I'd lose. Oh, you just sat in ketchup, I think. Like a lot of technology, thermal imaging was first developed for use in the military by this absolute snack of a man, allowing the British Air Force to more easily detect and target airplanes. But despite calling them cameras, thermal cameras are completely unable to detect any visible light. Instead, they detect the exact amount of heat hitting each pixel on the thermal sensor. And then instead of displaying a big grid of temperature values, it gets translated into a color gradient to make it easier for humans to understand. But you know what's hard to understand? Escalators. Uh, oh boy. Um, okay, dude, the, dude, it looks like a ramp. After getting off the subway, we walked to meet up with some friends, and then at hour five, we went to lunch. We got some pizza and all hung out. I spent 20 minutes playing with an ice cube. You know, normal stuff. Hour six, we played cornhole, and I actually sucked a lot less than I expected. The board was painted black and white, so the heat differential from the sun meant that I could actually see it pretty well. Still couldn't tell the difference between the bags, though. At hour eight, I met this dog, and by hour nine, I was starting to feel like I needed a little bit of a boost. Unfortunately, my phone was just a warm mirror that shows me how dorky I look, and I didn't know where any of the coffee shops were. So as a result, this became my first true challenge. Find a coffee shop without any help. Plus, adapting to new situations is one of the most important qualities of US Marines, and they actually partnered with me on this video. They're sending me out to train with them on base next week, but if I fail this challenge, there's no way they're gonna think I can handle theirs. To help me prepare, they actually sent me a box full of gear, including my own set of official Marine boots. Obviously no Marine would live in thermal vision 24-7, but thermal imaging is actually an important piece of tech that Marines do use, and learning to adapt and keep a cool head in challenging situations is a really important quality that every Marine needs to have. It's also obviously a quality that I need to work on because I am pretty lost at this point. But I realized if I can't use my eyes, maybe I can use my ears instead. Hey Siri, get me walking directions to the nearest coffee shop. And after that, I actually found a coffee shop. Ordered a raspberry latte with a large cup of ice, and then accidentally tipped $100 while trying to pay. But hey, they deserved it for letting me wear this thing inside. By the way, pouring hot coffee over ice is actually a trick I learned from my mom. You get fresher coffee if you order it hot, and the ice is usually free, so you do a DIY iced coffee. You know what else is free is actually subscribing to this YouTube channel. It's really good. Anyway, after leaving, we actually met this guy. <laughs> He seems nice. Hour nine, we went to an art gallery. Are, are we somewhere? I know I wouldn't be able to experience the work the traditional way, but I figured I might be able to pull something deeper out. And this is the first thing that caught my eye. Uh, I see a blurry thing over here. As I got closer, I saw the outline of a mother cradling her child comfortingly, as if to say everything is gonna be okay. After leaving the art gallery to head home, I was reminded of just how interesting it is that basically any piece of glass or metal turns into a giant mirror in thermal vision. You can see it in the giant reflections off of nearly every skyscraper in the city, and also off the random pieces of metal that are so common in man-made structures. Dude, that pizza's looking kind of chilly. Yeah, the pizza's getting... Pizza's getting... Is the pizza cold? Dude, the pizza's uh, stone cold. <laughs> Customers are gonna be pissed. Hour 10, we headed back to the apartment to reheat our pizza, and I actually met someone on the way there. Hey there. How's it going? It's going cool. I'm good. It's it's uh, thermal vision. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. 
I know, I know. I should have just told her she looked hot. Hour 11, we spent vibing at the apartment and repeated showed me a magic trick with the trash bag. Apparently thermal gives you like budget x-ray vision or something. By hour 12, we headed back out and I was actually feeling really confident at this point, which meant it was time for a new challenge, driving in thermal vision. To be able to truly live in thermal, I'd need a way to get around and obviously that can't be a car. I mean, it is kind of amazing that I can actually ride the scooter like this. I know that probably sounds really dangerous, because it is, but I needed to prove that I could do it if I wanted to show that living in thermal vision is actually possible. And while pretty much everyone we rode past thought I was insane, it actually went really well. By now it was actually dark outside, and basically every vehicle on the road looked insanely cool. You can tell whether a car was running recently based on whether it was glowing, and the heat from the exhaust pipes makes it look like every car has really sick underglow lighting. Plus, this bus was just insane. And I finally found a sign I can actually read. The biggest reason we were out, though, is that I heard about this place that does an insanely cool science experiment with flammable liquids. <laughs> And after a little dance break, we grabbed an Uber and headed back home to get ready for bed. Once we got back, I struggled through brushing my teeth and then spent 20 minutes laughing hysterically while changing the water temperature. <laughs> Dude, this is sick! And then we went to bed. The next day I woke up to make myself breakfast. It wasn't too hard except I couldn't see the buttons on the microwave. After breakfast, I wanted to get some exercise, so we headed to the park to play frisbee. Oh. Hey! And after getting wrecked in basketball, we went to this liquid nitrogen ice cream place. How'd I do? Did I order something? You could get that. Whoa! Pineapple butter pecan. Pretty good! Hour 29, I decided to buy a new shirt. Oh, that feels manly. All right. You like that? Yeah, I think it looks, uh, I think it looks hot. Are you wanna receive? Let's see how it looks. Yeah. Whoa! Yes, I wanna receive. <laughs> what did I just pop? Is this like animal print? By hour 30, I was back in the city where I watched a biker get chased through a water fountain. To be honest, at this point, everything in the challenge was starting to blur together. I was determined to wake up tomorrow in time to see a thermal sunrise, but other than that, I was getting pretty tired of the color red being constantly burned into my retinas. But the more I thought about it, the more I knew that a marine would find a way to power through. Marines have to be able to overcome unknown situations, and since I was going to be training with them myself, I needed to be able to do the same. And to prove I could truly survive in thermal vision, I needed to be able to cook. The first challenge was actually buying the groceries. Since all the cases are made of glass, I had no idea what was inside them, but by paying attention to what other people pulled out, I could at least get a decent guess. Oh my gosh, she has eggs. <gasps> Yo, where'd you procure those eggs? I procured them over here. Hell yeah. After I finished buying my groceries, I headed home to cook them, but I ran into a problem. Out of nowhere, my thermal camera just stopped working. Luckily, we had a backup plan, but it was not gonna be easy. Whoa. This is, <laughs> this is like hilarious bad. This is so hard to see. This headset was so bad that I could barely see enough to move. Beforehand, it seemed certain that I would make it through this challenge, but now I wasn't even sure if I could make it through the night. Oh, alrighty. Oh yeah, okay. What are we looking at over here? This, <laughs> God. That's not, oh wait, oh, we're looking, that's not the stove. <laughs> cool, cool. This has no justifiability for being this bad. I'm sorry, this is tough. All right, I think we got it. All right, we got our discs. That is the rear burner, we'll make it work. All right. I feel like I'm cooking with a blindfold on. Oh. Seasoning? Let's go. <laughs> we'll get there. Oh, that pan is hot. I should probably put that down to like medium heat. Please tell me I didn't like purchase bay leaves. What the fuck? What is this? Oh, that smells like cumin? Did I cop cumin? All right. Oh, well, I gotta flip. I'm pretty sure this is uh, like rock salt. Oh, nope. Nope, no idea what this is. Mmm, smells really good though. I think I missed the berg. I'll just mop that up. Get on the spatula. There we go. Right, I need my sink buns. 
God, this is a whirlwind of feelings. We're just gonna put my cheese slice right there. I feel like this boy's getting pretty toasty, but he's not done yet. It's a little bit hard to tell, honestly. <laughs> that was a terrible flip. I don't think you can call it a flip. <laughs> Let's go. Where are my boons? Oh, they're over here. All right, we got a bun. So we're just gonna stage this. Nah, I, I like my burger dry for the purposes of this experiment. Now, an egg. Oh, yes. <laughs> bun end, so I pop the egg. Oh, yeah. Oh, that looks good. Guys, this looks so cool. Like, it looks crazy, but it looks really cool. Mmm. That was one damn fine burger, I have to say. I'm pretty impressed. How's the doneness of that egg? What, is it raw? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it might not have been perfect, but it was my best effort, and at this point it was late enough that it was time to go to bed. The next morning we woke up super early and headed to the subway. We were so close to the end of this challenge, and I wanted to celebrate it right. So we rode a cable car all the way up a mountain so we could watch the sun rise over the entire city of Pittsburgh. Alright, 50 hours later, here we go. Summing up my feelings, I think this clip says it best. I just want to be clear, I can't see sh